What's up guys, welcome back or should I say welcome to Mac with the new software update. Today we are analyzing Sequoia 15.1 developer beta 6 and public beta 3 to see what has changed. Under the general and software update page you can see Sequoia 15.1, this is developer beta 6. If you're on the public beta that has just been released you see the public beta 3 of course depending on the beta profile that you have and right here if we click on the more info tab right there you can see the update size that this update comes in for me on my macbook pro it's 2.1 gigs and i'm updating from sequoia 15.1 the previous beta 5. my device is now up to date going into the software update page just to see the new build number that we have right here um it's good to check because last time with watchOS the build number that came out to the actual device was different from apple's website so they did mismatch that but this time around you can see 24b5070a and yes that build number definitely matches this update that we have today let's talk about some of the new features and changes that you can expect once you update to this new os so the first one that I noticed right here and right from the get-go is that besides the iPhone mirroring icon, you will see a new Siri application right there. It's an app icon and when you open it, it doesn't actually open a new window. It just opens this um, Siri animation right there. And at the same time, I noticed that the animation window has been made to become bigger. It's just that I'm using my secondary display or monitor and you can see it sort of takes about three trials. This is something that has happened before. It takes about three trials if you're using an external monitor for it to know which screen it should pop up at. And now that it's popping up on my secondary monitor, let's try that again and see if it's fixed. Yeah, so definitely much bigger. And now since we've gone through the phases, it's gonna always pop up on this window. When you open up the Apple Mail application for the first time after updating, this is the new splash screen that you're going to see. And it's gonna tell you Apple intelligence in mail, priority messages, message summaries, and smart replies. These are all features that have been existing for some time, but it just seems to be a new splash screen at this point in time. And they've also made prominence to the colors that these icons or these bold icons they represent which is something that's good if you click continue it just takes you to your messages nothing new and this has pretty much been existing if you open up the app store application after updating you will see a new splash screen i accidentally closed it by mistake and at the same time if you check for an update you might see some applications that they are trying to make more compatible with OS so do check to see if you have an update. Freeform application 2 received the new splash screen it just opened up on my other display but you can see here there's a pop-up screen that's going to tell you what's new in Freeform where you can create a scene send a copy and hence editing these are all features again that have been existing but we're just seeing a new splash screen right there and I like this Freeform background that makes it look like one of my plugins that I have from MKBHD which is pretty neat. In the photos application if you're having an issue with the cleanup where it would prepare nonetheless or endlessly rather you can see here after updating I did test this before updating and after updating you can see it still does the preparing thing but this time around the loop is not uh, like infinite it ends and now you can start using the free form or rather you can use this uh, cleanup feature and boom let's erase the iphone 15 pro okay a terrible job right there but you get the idea that that bug that was existing there has been resolved because mac os 15.1 is the update that talks about apple intelligence and the same with ios 18.1 when you update to them for the first time you're going to see a new splash screen that's welcoming you to apple intelligence and that's something that's also here on mac os sequoia 15.1 and at the same time they've made an improvement to the feedback assistant application to give you more information that you can give Apple to especially when it comes to smart replies and summaries where you can rate the responses or replies that are automatically generated and give them a plus or a negative to be able to give Apple better feedback on what this is doing and also since I'm here you can see in the top corner right there they've added this new color um, icon that you can see when you are capturing your screen and this is going to show whether you are using a third party software like I'm using right now Ecamm Live and at the same time if you click on it right there you can see if it's going to, if it's your cameras, this were existing, you see a green dot, but if it's screen recording, you're going to see a purplish dot and that 
also shows up whether you are in full screen or not, which is something that's good. Now you can tell when something or some sort of software is monitoring what you are doing on your screen. If you are inputting passwords, especially or using autofill and you see that icon, first of all, make sure you have, you are safe and you are the one doing it or you have given the permissions. Otherwise, it's a very good addition in terms of security. I don't have a lot of photos, but in the photos application, they've also improved the natural language search. So now you can search using more complex sentences or few complex sentences. Instead of just saying a red car, you can say a red car behind a mountain with red rims and with two doors open and stuff like that. But you get the idea. And now that natural language search, which is something that you typically want to search if you want to find a specific item item in your library in the photos application has been updated, which is something that's good. And also the same goes true with iOS 18.1. An application that was completely broken with the previous update or would continuously crash is the shortcut app. And after updating, I've opened it a couple of times and I'm happy to let you know that that bug has been resolved. Just like the previous update, this update also breaks a drop for me on my iPhone and Mac. I can send files from my Mac to my iPhone. This iPhone is in beta and I have another iPhone that's not in beta that I used to test as well. So sharing files from your iPhone, whether it's in beta or not, your Mac on Mac OS 15.1 developer beta 5 and developer beta 6 or public beta 3 seems to be broken at this point in time. I've reported it, but it seems like Apple hasn't yet resolved this issue. In the system settings application, now when you click on the search icon, they have improved the suggestions that you get. And at the same time, when you search for specific tasks such as reduce brightness and so on, you can get toggles that allow you to be able to change the function right from the search bar. And at the same time, it's not just the settings. If you press command and space bar and you activate spotlight search and you search for a specific task or function that you want to turn on or off, spotlight search tool is getting that intelligent search features and more icons can be toggled on or off just from the search bar in the notes application if you're a person that uses apple intelligence a lot you can see this icon when you hover over it it shows show writing tools and it's been updated from the previous one because now instead of it just mimicking the apple intelligence logo it now has a pencil so instead of having to highlight something and then right clicking on it and then going to writing tools, you can always go to the icon right there and it, you, it will automatically use writing tools to fix or your spelling mistakes or your grammars that you might need to update or fix. Because iCloud is available for the web, Apple has also updated the iCloud web services with a new splash screen and right there, you'll be able to see there's a new pop-up that will tell you about dark mode in iCloud.com. There's also customize your backgrounds and new features across apps all in all, there's over nine new features and changes that Apple has introduced with iCloud for the web or iCloud.com. And if you're a person that uses it frequently, you'll be able to see those once you head over. If I go into my display and go into light mode right there, give it a few seconds, go back to dark mode right here and then open up Safari. It seems to get a bug where sometimes it glitches, it, it, it forgets which mode I'm in, but at least with this update, it seems to have been resolved. You can check my previous video to see the, all, what I was experiencing with this bug. And just to show you right here, if we go to about Safari, you can see the version that I'm on right there. It's uh, still version 18.1 and the build is 20619.2.8.1 1.4 and I believe there was just an increment of two from the previous update and it seems to just be minor bug fixes. Now in terms of what's new in the release notes, Apple didn't really tell us much when it comes to the Sequoia 15.1 beta 6 or public beta 3 release. They mentioned a number of resolved issues but mostly it seems to be pretty similar notes to the previous beta 5 update which brings us to when we can expect the next update because if you look at this mac os 15.1 update that we are on currently the build number is getting a little bit more stable and at the same time my battery has been pretty good with this beta and you can see it ends with an a and usually once we are on an a build it usually signals that we are close to the official release which brings us to when we could see the next update now the next update might actually not be 
Mac OS 15.1 officially. We might get to see another official release such as Mac OS 15.0.2 because Mac OS 15.0.1 came out a few days ago. And by this time last year, we actually had Mac OS 15.0.2. So we could see that first. And then next week on the 14th, we can expect, of course, the next beta, which will pro probably be Mac OS 15.1 beta 7. I think the previous Mac OS 14 got all the way to beta 8. So we have a couple of betas and according to Mark Gurman, this update might be officially released on the 28th of September alongside iOS 18.1. So that's just a quick rough update on what Mac OS 15.1 um, has to offer if you're on the public beta you're on beta 3 if you're on the developer beta you're on beta 6 so let me know what you think about this video if you liked it do give us a like as it helps us push our exposure here on the channel and at the same time don't forget to subscribe so that you stay up to date my name is ben and i'm signing off